Interesting though, here's the back of it open. As you push the lever, you can see the spring. As you pull the lever, push or pull, doesn't move. The hydraulics um, bleed down, if you will. So you have to uh, function it. You have to stroke this uh, probably 60 times or so to start getting the hydraulics to start responding um, to, against that spring pressure. Uh, and here's the odd thing. You can do that all you want like that. Once you start it up, now it will be much better. I've seen the manufacturer tell you how to do that without it started. That's a joke. Don't do that. Start this guy up and run it. I'm going to run it run right now. Let's see. It's, it's, a, it's a cold start. As you can see I'm touching everywhere. I'm touching the exhaust pipe. Where's exhaust? Here. So it's a cold start. Let's see. From the cold start with this Honda engine, it's winter time right now. Well, it's almost winter. It's uh, Christmas. Oh, it is winter. Yeah, this is uh, 24th of, uh, of December. So let's see uh, Christmas Eve. Let's see. Let's see our quality of how easy it starts up. Oh, I've got to make sure I got gas. Fuel. Yep, there's enough, enough fuel in there. Do I have the fuel line open? On. Choke. And one, start. One, two, three, four. Now let it easy choke out. Before trying to get over. I don't want to stall. Put it, put it now, but with this guy. Whoops. This guy, you pretty much have to go from from uh, from from straight up to full throttle. You don't play around between. Now it's on the uh, choke on. It's not quite warmed up, but let's give it a try anyway. Now I didn't like that. I didn't like that. So let it warm up a little more. So much surface tension, not pulling out, which I'm happy because now I get to bleed it out more. And all I'm doing is bleeding it out, and it'll go much faster. But it works better if this machine's warmed up. I'm not the manufacturer that tells you to do that without warming it up. That's just, I found out you get the thing running, the vibration gets the bubble out of the air out of the hydraulic line. Now I'll show you that that spring is now releasing. The spring is. Let me zoom in on that and do it. Hold on. The trick is to go full up and back on the whole throttle, and you don't waste your time trying to do it without it. But once the machine's running. I mean, you don't have to do this every time. Once you got it warmed up, she'll, she'll let you run pretty nice for uh, continuous, continuously for uh, you know days and days. It's been sitting like this for about I don't know five weeks. So this is the first start in five weeks, and it's vibrating. There's a lot of water surface tension, which I'm using my advantage now because I don't have to let the machine move around while I try to bleed. That's a lot of moisture pulling out, pushing out. Nice surface, obviously it's asphalt.
guys to take note. I'm going to zoom out. I want you to take note how I can handle it with just one hand. Once you, uh, once you, um, uh, have it on something that's not like that, that sticky, that, that, uh, surface tension material with all that moisture in it. Now, look how, look how easy it is to handle with just one hand. Remember to go at it one time. Okay, so now you guys see um, what's uh, you know how how nice this machine is, how nice this machine is, and you see that it'll tell you the specs right here says 3,100, 3, 3,300 RPMs or your running speed. Obviously, I got mud, everything jumping everywhere, so I'll I'll clean this up. I as you might have noticed, I'll keep it clean. Uh, so I'll, I'll rinse it off real quick. Yes, ear protection. Um, she's a beautiful, nice little machine. She's a beautiful machine. And you can see how easy it is to operate. But the trick is, again, don't try to bleed the air out with this off. Bleed it out with it on. And, you know, if you can bleed it in one place, that would be just as well. It defaults, I think, in the reverse until you start bleeding it. Then you'll get more forward. So let's see. Yeah, let's see. So it defaults in the... So now it's not on, so you don't see the spring knot. There we go. All right, it defaults in the reverse. So it will want to go, so you can get it running immediately in reverse. But as you're going in reverse, every now and then just put, keep tamping, keep working, and just push it forward. Reverse, forward, reverse, forward, reverse, forward. But you got to go cross neutral where this is now, and then back again. This will bleed out this system much faster. Now, I think I was bled out a long time ago over here, but I was just having a little fun with that surface tension to see how much it was actually holding it. You know, it was just beautiful, I think. You know, um, just the water content and this plate and just sucking it right together. That was that. That was awesome, holding back this machine. As you saw, it's a bear out here when you have no moisture. You put it in moisture, it grabs it like a bear. Now, I'm a soil nut as a... You guys may or may not know. So that's your trench machine. And it's, it's dual wheels. And it works in trench and it works in a lot more uh, muddy, muddier climate, if you will. It's got rollers on it. It can roll itself out sometimes with the teeth that's on it also. Yeah. I'm not done there. Let's see. And then you got the big boy, the big roller, smooth roller. That's a big old smooth roller I have there, hiding out. So this is the Mikasa model, MVH-206GH. And she weighs 500 pounds. There's the power it puts out, etc. But you can easily Google this if you wanted to see more. It weighs 500 pounds, uh, plus the tamp, the vibration, the vibratory action of this creates more force on the surface, on the entire surface plate it's, it's contacting the soil at any one point. So you just don't automatically assume that all that's always in contact. It's not always in contact. If you go over top of this rock, for example, all that force is now pretty much on top of that rock until it gets a little more level and then around it. You do multiple passes, vibrating something that will vibrate, a material that will vibrate and, and, and integrate with each other, integrate, inter, become integral with each other. These two stones, these larger stones, don't really, you can vibrate them all you want, and you're only going to get sitting on top. You need some fines in there also, a little bit of moisture, a little bit of moisture, 3% like or so, um, to uh, help interlock them. So here's a small one. So you can get this vibrated down pretty tightly, but it'll always be something you can just pick off. Now, once you get them integral like this, this size, they'll interlock more. Moisture is a problem again. Um, too much moisture, and we're back to this what we saw earlier. So now she's cleaned up, ready to store away, power washed. Power wash it. Need to know when I'm finally have my 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 stroke. See the stroke is finally working. Let out. So there's no. If I have the door on there, I, I can feel a lot of resistance here, right? But you know what? It's nothing like a visual to back it up and go. Okay, I'm done. I'm maxed out. I can keep moving. Again, the return is just a matter of releasing it, so that's that 
you won't see the spring you won't see the spring shorten this way just that direction here's your oil level oil levels filled here this damn nut is a hundred and thirty five hundred and fifty dollars delivered if you if you screw up it's a bleeder inside this is a hole in here a spring it's a pop it in there that allows uh, the bleeding action to take place um, when you're doing this lever so it allows the bleeding action to take place when you're doing the lever uh, to get the air out of it this is also where you see some people play around trying to bleed it that's what that's a waste of energy don't bother with that unless you're changing the oils out here's your oil right there saw30 10w30 don't bother with this just do it with my technique i'm told you about that's your engine oil don't bother thinking you're going to find a way to bleed it out faster by coming down here don't bother that bleeder valve this bleeder does work there's that little teeny pinhole in it right here Let's see if i can get you zoomed out a little bit and zoom back in there's a little teeny hole okay it's that little teeny hole right there in the middle of the screen on the nut right there below my finger that's the bleeder for getting the air out there you can see it much better now all right it's christmas eve let me finish cleaning up this yard and get everything organized multi-quip my uh mvh 206 uh, plate tamper and page 17 um, very interesting, right? Page 17 and 32. Well, we'll get to it. So this is about viscosity of oils, 32 weight versus 46 weight viscosity. I get this a lot of questions with this about, uh, which oil is good for my machines. Um, so it's viscosity and temperature related is what really matters. But let's jump to page... 17 so 12 16 okay page 17 right here it says visually inspect to determine if hydraulic oil level is is low if oil is low use shell 46 oil all right or equivalent through the hand pump fill lever right there now that's an aluminum uh, breather cap that thing is uh, will will strip out like that if you don't just snug it with just a gentleness of hand just to stop the leak any leaking and that's it do not use a, a torque wrench on it at all. Now we come to page, you saw that it said 46, viscosity. Now we come to page 32, I believe, 25. Again, it says uh, use uh, 46 or equivalent, figure 32. All right, so there's that figure. So again, once again, 46. We scroll down, bleeding, etc. Blah blah blah. You know, troubleshooting. The troubleshooting is wrong about bleeding and all that. You don't want to warm this machine up, start this machine up, get it going, and just crank that handle forward and backwards all the way through the range, from back to middle to the other opposite end, back to the middle to the other end. That's how you're going to bleed it. And when you look at the spring in the back of it moving, then you know you're you're bled. Um, and the more you do it, the more responsive and faster the machine will get. Not saying fast is good because you don't want to, uh, you know, just race across materials. Now look, we come to this page, and it's page 32 right here. Um, all of a sudden now they're telling you, label back here, use uh, oil 32. So you can see the manual is uh, conflicted. All right, so they want you to mix oils, obviously. I guess the uh, engineers didn't see that. All right, let's, let's blow that off. Let's go to... Um, viscosity. The hotter the temperature, thinner the oil becomes, and the cooler the engine. In this case, it would be the performance of the uh, hydraulics. The thicker. So, for example, a hydraulic system operating in cold climate, like wherever, would run at a 32 viscosity much better than at a 46. Conversely, if you're in a, if you're running it hot in a hot environment, then you want to use a 46 or even even greater. With that said, it's going to take a little while for the machine to heat up your oil to bleed. So bleeding might take a little longer, but you might get better response performance on the uh, on the um, uh, travel. Now it's always it's always going to travel it one direction by default, and I forget what that is and backwards. So you automatically will have that going for you, and you can still start working. And as you're working it, you push the handle forward to bleed to bleed the air out of the system 
and you keep doing that until you see the spring in the back start to move. Once you know the spring is moving, you're you're about up and running now. You're back to normal. And the bleed down on this I've found to be over three weeks, right about three weeks. So if you just let it sit and you don't use it, it about three weeks as your your lifting hook before you you have to worry about bleeding it. You know by doing that handle trick. So what do I mean by that? Well, also the uh, hour gauge on this machine will switch to uh, RPMs, and it has a, uh, a range. It says 3,200 here, but if you look at the machine, it actually will give you the range, the range that they, they like. It's labeled back there. This is the lever I'm talking about. For, stroking it forward and fully backwards will, will bleed it um, fully. But again, your oil and your temperature matters. So uh, that's it. I just wanted to make and keeping the fins clean because it cools by the fins. Um, this machine has, where is it on the opposite side, has the uh, fins that keep it cool So you're on this side. So you want to keep these ports clear of dirt. Keep this all cleaned out. You know, power wash it. Power wash it won't hurt. All right, and again, that's how you, you're bleeding is stroking there, not how they recommend, unless you change the oil out. They recommend bleeding. Um, at that point, you would bleed for fun at the base of this machine. So this, this is a very nice machine, guys, right there is where you bleed. This nut here, you add add oil in there, bleed it out here, um, bleeding with the with the handle fully down. That way, it's open in that position, bleeding it out, and then locking the nut while it's still down, and then lifting the bar to the rear position um, as you're adding oil. Um, bleed that out. Tighten the nut, and then let it go back to the middle position, just like bleeding a car brakes. Then you're done. After you see it come all out, there's a clean flow coming out. You're done. Oil drips all down there. Oil be it. So be it. Whatever. Um, then you're done. And then it's just going to be typical bleeding as you start the machine up. Just crank it back and forth to get that spring. Uh, you bleed the air out through that bleeder. That, that expensive $130 nut right here. This damn piece of plus shipping maybe it was more. Again, that's critical not to uh, over-tighten that. Um, thank you. Thank you to... Uh,